Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Witchy Wednesdays and today we're talking about coming out of the broom closet. When it comes to coming out of the broom closet, I never really felt that I was that much into the broom closet. Only because I never felt the need to hide too much. My parents come from Cuba, so we are, you know, Cuba has a lot of uh, African and Caribbean traditions, so it has a lot to do with Santeria and spiritualism. So to say that I was a witch or that I was Wiccan or what have you wasn't that much of a bold move for me to say, uh, but it was a little scary because of my mother, which if you guys are on this channel and have seen my videos, you know that me and my mom don't get along. We're very oil and water, mainly because my mom is just really paranoid and worried and whatnot. Let me lay back up with you here. I was about 10 when I realized that I wanted to be a witch. Fantastic things uh, with magic. I want to learn all this stuff. Mainly because I saw this movie called The Worst Witch Ever. Um, it is an awesome movie. It was pre-Harry Potter, very pre-Harry Harry Potter. Um, I was like 10 or, or something, or younger even, when I saw that movie. And <clears throat> I related to the main character quite a bit, actually. And I wanted to be her. I wanted to go to a school like that. Um, that was uh, a boarding school and whatnot, just like Harry Potter. It was very similar. The only difference was that there's no Voldemort or there's no big bad guy and she doesn't have like a destiny. She's just, you know, a klutz when it comes to magic. And, um, and you know, like the, they make fun of her and whatnot, but in the end she ends up being, you know, the coolest girl in school. And everybody likes her. Um, and that's why I liked the movie because it was so it was so cool and I related because, you know, I I was a bit of an outcast in, in school when I was in elementary <clears throat> when I was in elementary. So I really related to the character. Um, and as time progressed, I was very interested into like vampires, werewolves, uh, all that stuff, all that cool stuff that you see in movies, like I would stay up to watch these movies. And I decided, like I said, by 10, I was like, I'm doing this. If I can find a religion or something, or if I could, you know, figure this out, I'm going to do it. And um, years passed, like I think I was 15, so it was like five years later. Um, <clears throat> I was watching this TV show called Signs, I think it was called Signs. And it was basically a show that talked about uh, either aliens or with, uh, aliens or metaphysics. And it was always like, you know, haunted houses and whatnot. And they would do interviews with people that lived there. And it was a really cool show. And they did an, uh, an episode where they showed about witches and real witches too. And I think Laura Cabot was in there, but I'm not sure. I don't think it was her, but I'm not. I'm not 100 percent on that. And I was like, "Wait a minute! You mean you mean it's it, it's real? It's not like just in the movies?" I was like, "Yes, let's do this now." I remember hearing. I remember um, also hearing that my my cousin, who was who's not into witchcraft or anything like that, uh, his parents are Christian. But I remember uh, my mom saying that when. In that particular denomination of Christianity that they are, that they are, um, <clears throat> when you reach a certain, uh, I think, eighteen, or are about to reach eighteen, you're given uh, the choice to actually be baptized or not to be baptized. And in a sense, it's like saying, you know, what religion do you want to be? What, you know, what's your faith? And it's really giving that child that choice instead of saying, you know, this is what you are because that's what you are. Because I say so. Um, and I was like, okay, so for some reason or another, I got it in my head going, okay, so that means at 18, I get to choose. <laughs> like, for some reason that, you know, I, 
that's how it had to work. I don't know why I thought this. But for some re reason in my head, I was like, okay, so at 18, I gotta choose if I do or if I don't. So my 18th birthday was coming up, I, I kid you not. And um, I was working as a photographer at a photography studio. And I was like, oh, can I go on my break? And the minute I go on my break, instead of going to go eat, I go to the local bookstore, which is in the mall. And I ask them, oh, where do you have like tarot cards or something like that? They show me the side. I literally like, for the hour that I'm on my break, no eating, just looking through all the books. And I ended up buying this one book, which wasn't what I expected, was not what I wanted. I read it and I was like, eh, all it does is show me charms, that's it. And it, it did, it did, it showed me um, how to do um, these cute little charms. And then you said like incantations. Uh, the incantations were not uh, in any way, shape or form um, uh, readable in my opinion, or, or I could not verbally uh, do it, only because of the fact that I'm dyslexic, so I would switch the, the words around, and it just didn't, it didn't work out for me, so it was, it was a little hard. Um, <clears throat> so I was like, well, you know, I'll put that aside, let me go back. So I, would, I went back a couple of days later, and I bought Scott Cunningham's book on uh, Wicca for the Soul Practitioner. I picked it up and I swear to God, I did not drop that book for anything in this world. I literally carried it around like a protective keepsake that I didn't want anybody to touch, I didn't want anybody to look at it. Um, <clears throat> my mom saw it, didn't know what it was, and just liked the fact that I was reading because since I was dyslexic, I never bothered to read that much. Because of, of Wicca, I, I, can, I can read pretty damn good now. Uh, and I'm really proud of myself for that. Um, so yeah, so that happened. And then I, I, when I got that book, I started practicing. I started, I, I made up a little altar. I, I, I mean, I, I really, I dug really deep into it. I, I really immersed myself into it. And I told my mom that I just wanted to meditate. Uh, because she was getting into, at the same time when this was happening, my mom was getting into um, Christianity and becoming um, a Pentecostal Christian um, instead of being a your typical Catholic. So I did, so we were going in totally separate directions uh, when it comes to religion. So I, I decided that I, I wanted to practice this. Um, I started to, I started doing it in front of, like my mom, not necessarily in front of her, but she knew that I had something, but she thought it was, um, uh, meditation and I just wanted to decorate my room and make it look pretty. Um, she didn't think anything of it, meeting my ex-husband, and he told me, you know, like, eventually you're gonna have to explain it to her and tell her what it is, and I was like, yeah, I know, and my mom knew that there was something going on because she hated that I always had incense on. She hated that I had incense on. She was always afraid that I might burn down the house. I don't know why. And one day I just told her, look, mom, just to let you know, I'm really happy that you found your uh, spiritual center by becoming a Pentecostal Christian and that's the path that you've chosen. And I would really like it if you respect mine. And you know, and she's like, well, you're a Christian too, because I'm taking you to church. And I go, no, mom, I'm not. And you know I'm not. And the conversation went from listening to me to not listening to me. And just listening to what she wanted to hear, if that makes any sense. So for the first couple of years, my mom ignored it. And treated me, when it came to that, as just... Um, a rebellion. Like you're just doing it because I'm Christian and you just want to go in the other direction just to upset me. I'm like, no, 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 no. Seriously, like this is something that I've been wanting. This is my path that I've been wanting since I was a little girl. And she's like, you're, you're lying. You're not telling me the truth. And you're just saying that just to um, go against me because you don't like me. I'm like, that's not true. Uh, and to this day, she she still believes that I'm basically doing it just to annoy her. 
which is ridiculous. Um, but she has become more accepting of what I practice, so much so that um, she lets me put protections and amulets all over the house. And if I do plan on doing something, um, she does give me the privacy that I need <clears throat> to do it. Uh, and she doesn't necessarily put a lot of stock in what I do, but she respects it a little bit more. She understands that I feel the need to do it. Okay? But for years, she ignored it and she treated it as if I was just going through a phase. Even though I was like already in my 20s and now 30s, I'm, you know, for a long time, she was just like, oh, it's just a phase that she's going through. Like if I'm a teenager going through puberty. Uh, so yeah, so that's my mother. But, um, but she ended up, now she's, she's okay with it. And she's much, she's much better with it. M way more acceptant. And um, my father never really minded. It, it didn't bother him. It was just very much like, she's an adult. She's a grown woman. She can decide what she wants. Um, and we need to respect her decision. And if we can't do that, then, you know, my, my dad would be like, well, if you can't do that, that, that's your problem. Because she's not doing anything wrong. She's just following her heart. And guys, that is my coming out of the broom closet story. And before I end this, I want to say one thing, and that is, I want to know how you guys came out of the broom closet. Or are you guys still in the broom closet? Leave me your stories and your comments below. I'd really like to hear them. Other than that, guys, if you have any ideas or requests for videos for Witchy Wednesdays, let me know because you might see your video soon. Other than that, guys, much love and blessings.